Learning how to land a plane is one of the most exciting and rewarding parts of becoming a pilot. It is the culmination of a lot of hard work and training. And though landing requires a high degree of precision and skill and can feel a little overwhelming at first, once you get the hang of it, you'll probably find it to be one of the most rewarding parts of any flight. But you might be wondering, how do I actually get set up for landing? And how do pilots transition from flying en route to the landing approach? The answer is the traffic pattern. This video will describe the traffic pattern in detail and describe its component parts as well as the normal procedure in a light single engine aircraft. So let's get started. Here is the basic structure of a traffic pattern. It's essentially a rectangular circuit that you fly with one of the long sides being the runway. This traffic pattern is what we call a standard pattern because all the turns in the circuit are to the left. Why to the left? Well, it's because as a pilot, you sit on the left side of the aircraft and the standard pattern gives you the best visibility of the runway you're landing on. Let's now discuss the structure of this pattern and add more detail as we go along. The first thing I'll mention are these runway numbers. They're helpful for orienting which headings to fly in a traffic pattern. How, you might ask? Well, because the runway numbers relate to the magnetic alignment of the runway. In this case, when you're landing on runway 27, your magnetic heading will be roughly 270. And likewise, if you're landing on runway 09, your magnetic heading would be approximately 090. Knowing this information, you can always estimate what the approximate headings of the rest of the legs are in the pattern. So let's talk about those legs now. Each leg or side of the traffic pattern has a specific name. After you take off, you're flying on the upwind leg. When you make a left turn, you're then on the crosswind leg. And then when you turn 90 degrees again, you'll be on the longest part of the traffic pattern called the downwind leg. And then the next short side closest to the end of the runway you'll land on is called the base leg. And then the last leg is called the final or final approach. Remember how I said that a standard pattern is when you fly left turns in the traffic pattern? Well, we also refer to this as left traffic. And you can see that over the radio when announcing your position, you name some of these legs differently to help people know exactly where you are. Left downwind, left base, etc. as opposed to right traffic. So if you're wondering, can I fly a traffic pattern using only right turns? The answer is yes. Unless otherwise stated though, you use left traffic. That's, that's why it's called a standard traffic pattern. You can see here, we're now landing on runway 09, making right turns, so all of our legs would be right downwind, right base, etc. In both cases, you're not gonna say right final or right upwind, since if you're on either of these, everyone will know exactly where you are anyway. So now let's describe the structure of this pattern. These are different aspects you'll use to help maintain consistency and help other pilots know where you are. Normally, you don't want to make a traffic pattern too big or too small, too tight or too wide. Otherwise, it makes it more difficult to learn and also might make it harder for other pilots to spot you. So I've departed runway 27 and we'll be making left traffic to stay in the pattern and practice landings. The first turn's easy. I simply just climb away from the runway and after a few hundred feet, or when I'm safely off the ground, I make a 90 degree left turn to enter the crosswind leg. But when should I make my next turn? How do I know when to turn downwind? The answer is you wanna make this turn when you're approximately a half mile from the runway. This can take some practice, but as you fly more, you'll get better at spotting distances from the air. But the goal is half mile from the runway, make your downwind turn. The next point to consider along the traffic pattern is here, called the abeam point. This is a point directly parallel to your landing spot. Here, we're assuming I want to land directly on the runway numbers. So when I am abeam the runway numbers on my downwind leg, this is where I will start my landing approach, adjust my power, and configure for the descent. And the next component of the traffic pattern is the base turn. So when do I turn base? Uh, you'll make this base turn onto the base leg when you look over your shoulder and see the runway about 45 degrees behind you. So you just look over your shoulder and kind of estimate about 45 degrees. You'll get better at that. You roll into your turn and keep track of your landing point as you continue along the pattern. As is the case with any landing, this is the ideal procedure. The reality is that every landing is different. 
and you may need to adjust your approach due to traffic, obstacles, safety factors, or because air traffic control gave you instructions. But during training, the more consistently you can build your approach out, the easier it will be to practice. We hope you found this helpful and look forward to flying with you soon.